field. We'll tell you where to find it, how to use it, and why we love it. We've assembled the best experts in the country to make sure what you buy is the best in its category. They've tried it so that you can buy. Troma presents Unboxed, the ultimate tech buying guide. Monday at 8 p.m. on NDTV Prime. Presented by Chroma, the electronics mega store and ChromaRetail.com, the 24-7 store. Powered by Toshiba, leading innovation. Welcome back to India's Small Giants. Now, a story of how a niche company started by first-generation entrepreneurs has made it on the world stage. Let's see how an Indian company making ethnic and traditional jewelry transformed itself into a well-known international brand and has become a sweetheart of the fashion and film world. Amrapali Jewels. Amongst India's many legacies is one such legacy of Amrapali. Amrapali today is a globally renowned and respected coveted luxury jewelry brand. This timeless legend and its image association to feminine beauty is the inspiration and intuition and brings the brand the ideal association to Indian heritage. We started Amrapali in 1978 with my partner Mr. Rajesh Ajmira. We both were studying history in Rajasthan University and we thought that we should start something which is very close to our art, culture and crafts of Rajasthan. We started with handicrafts but slowly we were dealing in whether it's paintings or ivory or single wood or bogan crafts or brass items. Once we found some old pieces of silver jewellery which were used in remote areas in villages in Rajasthan and we thought that we should transform them into very very interesting designs and we started making one of a kind earrings and necklaces and people appreciated what we created. We tried to sell some pieces as it is, rest we tried to design in our way which we used to do and slowly there was such a huge demand that I had to start manufacturing those pieces again replicas or pieces inspired by those designs. We had very small money to start with. We never took any help from our families but we worked really hard. Many celebrities like Kiran Kher or Rina Roy, they started visiting a small Amrapali shop which was in a byline of MI Road. We used to travel maybe three, four times in a week to Delhi or Mumbai to sell our art pieces which we used to collect from Jaipur or which we used to commission to make for a specific order. I used to make all the earrings because we had no workforce. So it took first three, four years to start with silver jewelry. But afterwards we were really lucky because we were selling very well what we were creating. It was selling very good and we started first manufacturing unit in Sitapura. Now we have a design studio in our factory and very, very qualified, very talented bugging designers are working with Amrapali. Amrapali has three manufacturing units in Jaipur. Um, one of them is in the Special Economic Zone. We have silver and gold uh, departments in all the factories. We are employing anywhere from 1400 to 2300 craftsmen depending on the work required at that time. We have lots of women working for us as well. We are trying to promote that there should be more and more women uh, working and we should be liberating them as well. Maintaining the tradition and culture in their ethnic to completely modern and contemporary pieces, it is also being called one amongst the foremost jewellery brands across the globe. We are so happy that now Amrapali is all important major cities in the country, whether it's Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Chennai or uh, Kolkata. Also we have stores in London and also office in New York. Recently we started our online business because I feel that like every Indian woman should have one Amrapali piece. With online business, with e-commerce, you can reach to remote areas, to smaller cities in this country, also around the globe. The who's who of Hollywood, also Bollywood, flaunt Amrapali trinkets at the best of best A-list events. Their success story doesn't end here. They've also executed an intriguing jewelry collection in the magnum opus Troy in 2004. 
Their decision to highlight the rich variety of Indian jewellery throughout the world has brought this 33-year-old institution the heights of being a global jewellery brand. See, success is always relative, you know. What we have achieved, we are thankful to God and also to all our well-wishers and our customers who make Anurpali what it is now. But I and Mr. Ajmera also feels that there is a lot to do and a lot to achieve if we combine the craftsmanship of Jaipur and also skills of cutting and polishing stones and manufacturing, India can become the world jewelry hub. Fascinating, wasn't it? Preserving India's heritage and promoting it worldwide to a large audience, to change the lives of its artisans and its customers alike, making them beautiful and radiant. Now, how many business people among us have said, I could do this better, or there is no opportunity in this industry or that industry, or there are no green fields left? Well, our next company took an everyday product, turned assumptions on their head, and have made its milk products a booming success. Dairy products are linked with health and wellness since ages. India's modern dairy sector has expanded rapidly. Atul Mehra, a first generation entrepreneur, from tasty dairy specialities to harness the opportunities available in dairy sector and exploit the abundant availability of quality milk. Traditionally, I am from a business family. My father has a trading business of medicines. I completed my education by being a B.Tech in mechanical engineering. I am a mechanical engineer, but my father's business was medicine trading. As such, I was not very comfortable in that business, so I was exploring new ideas of business. I came across the story of George Burgess Gurian, who is also a mechanical engineer. So I got very inspired by that. And at the same time, the dairy industry in India was de-licensed and we could, as private entrepreneurs, set up a dairy industry. The investment I made in this industry was very small, I would say just 20 lakh rupees in the 1990s. I had a part-time accountant, a few technical people, most of the work was done by me and also my wife. We grew very slowly, we had little capital, so we were going very slow and gradually the business increased. When we started handling milk, gradually the milk quantity that was coming to the factory started increasing. That was the time we started thinking of new products and the market that we were catering at that time started getting saturated. So we thought of entering into new lines, making new products. Today we are handling more than 4 lakh liters of milk per day. The main products in our umbrella are liquid milk, milk powder, butter, ghee. We also make paneer, instant food mixes like gulab jamun mix. For testing of milk, we have about 30 tests which are done on each sample of milk that comes to the factory. First of all is the sensory test where we taste the milk and then the other tests are done in the laboratory as far as the fat content is concerned, the SNF content is concerned, the freshness of milk is concerned and all the tests to understand whether the milk is of the best quality or not. We have a range of products and our clientele is different. We are dealing with uh, MNCs in India who are producing uh, bakery MNCs in India who are dealing with biscuits, ice creams and other products. We have our own market in the brand name of Ujwal and Shikhar. We have a presence in 18 states of India where we have our own consignees and the products are sold through them in those markets. As far as my contribution to the white revolution is concerned, I would say it's just a drop in the ocean. It is not very significant but in ways, we have done what we could do in a place like Kanpur to let the milk quantity increase, the farmers get their better returns. For guiding the farmers, we have regular workshops in which clean milk production is taught to them. We have veterinary doctors going to the villages, looking after the animals, telling them how to take care of their animals. And that is how we help the farmers to give us the best quality milk. Well, Prayas is a project that we are running as a CSR project in Tasty Dairy. PRAYAS stands for Project Requiring Your Association and Support. 
through prayas we are giving scholarship to hundreds of students associated with us where we have a matching contribution system i am in tie up with a few doctors who take care of the accident victims who cannot afford their treatment so what tasty dairy does is to provide the doctors with financial support and doctors take care of the patients and several people every year are treated under project prayas milk is 85% water what we do in our factory is that we dry this milk from its water content take out this water the tankers that go to the villages to bring the milk they take this water this is used for various purposes by the farmers so that is how we don't incur any expense the water is given back to the farms everywhere where it can be used for cleaning and that is how we are working on water conservation also the secret of success behind tasty dairy is striving for perfection taking care of all its constituents having an approach that winning is both sides if somebody loses you don't win and that is how we do conduct business the single mind focus on maintaining quality and increasing productivity helped the company to add feathers in its cap which included numerous awards and recognitions truly tasty and truly enterprising to take an engineering background and diversify successfully into a milk product company well done well that's all from us folks join us again same time next week with the incredible success stories of more emerging enterprises on india small giants and don't forget to log on to our website indiasmeforum.org meanwhile stay on the course to success